Thus far, we've discussed at length what a DNA center is, what it does for me, and how I can interact with it in order to be able to declare my intent with regard to what I wanted to have take place inside of my network infrastructure. In this portion of our theoretical conversations, we want to look at the form factor that's going to be associated to a DNA center. A DNA center is going to end up being a hardened network appliance that is going to ship in the form of a UCS C220 M5 server. And when that server arrives, we will need to set that application server up. And inside of the DNA center deployment and the DNA architecture model that we've been discussing, we know that we want to leverage the power and the capability of a cluster of resources. We want to cluster these devices in such a fashion to support the ability to be able to lose one and still maintain all of our core operational features and capabilities. This is going to translate to the principle of high availability, not to be confused with disaster recovery. In the context of DNA, disaster recovery is going to be a completely different discussion. So right now, what we want to do is we want to focus on the fact that we're going to be building this infrastructure that we're going to be using in our lab moving forward from this moment on. That is going to include three DNA centers running on the C220 M5 servers that I described earlier. Now, when we get these servers, we're going to have to interconnect these servers into a network environment, and that network environment is going to be referred to as our shared services block. Other devices and resources will be added to this block of devices to include DHCP servers, DNS servers, or IPAMs, as well as in my specific lab, our wireless LAN controllers. Now, once we boot these devices up, we will need to make certain that applications are going to be installed on these devices. And we have to begin with the first one. The first device is going to end up being what we refer to as our seed controller. That seed controller is actually going to support all of the functionality that is part of the DNA center. That means that it's going to include our services. It's going to need Kubernetes. It's going to need our Docker containers. It's going to have all of our databases, whether we're talking about MongoDB, which is only going to communicate with JSON, and or if, whether we're going to be talking about something like Cassandra, who is going to support the idea of a, a specific query language, in this particular instance, Cassandra query language. What we're going to end up doing is build an infrastructure that's going to support the capability of being able to dynamically spin up microservices. Now, in the context of the DNA Center, those microservices are going to be managed by Kong. Kong is going to actually be our microservice architecture infrastructure that's going to handle authentication, deployment, maintenance of runtime information. And ultimately, what we're going to do is we're going to spin up Docker containers that are going to be orchestrated using K8s, Kubernetes, in order to be able to instantiate our environment that we're going to be using to interact with what ultimately will become our software-defined access fabric. Now, when we step back and we start taking a look at this, it's important to note that we need a minimum of three of these devices. So the first action that we're going to take is to add a second DNA C. Now, the moment that we add that second DNA C, it will go through an installation process. But since this device is not the primary device inside of my cluster, we will denote this as a member of the cluster. Now, it still will receive applications that will be installed on it to include all of the baseline configurations when it comes to the Rabbit MQ, which is going to be our messaging broker, when it comes to our file system, which in this case, which is going to be the Gluster file system, those databases that I described as well as Docker and Kubernetes. And we'll explore all of this at the command line and inside of the graphical user interface once we get our cluster up and operational. In fact, we'll explore it during the construction of our cluster. And remember, I said that we needed three DNA Cs. Now, again, this is going to constitute three UCS C220 M5 servers that are going to be interconnected together on a shared network infrastructure in a single location. 
And what we're trying to do is create an infrastructure that will allow us to be able to recover from the loss of a single node or prevent the loss of a single node from impacting our network deployment and operations. Now, we will not see a distribution of services across these devices until such time that we activate high availability. And remember, the DNA center is going to not allow us to implement high availability until such time that we have three functional devices that have been brought up in our cluster. It's also going to be important to note that we can't just do all three of them at one time. We have to build the quote unquote seed node. And then what we have to do is add the second. And then when the second device is added to the cluster, we have to add the third. But this doesn't give us out of the gate any high availability functionality. It's not until we activate HA and distribute resources across these devices that we're going to be able to get the benefit of our cluster. So what will end up happening is, is the fusion services and the NDP services will be distributed across all three servers. So what we're seeing here is, is we are going to have Kong in all three. We are going to have fusion services and NDP services running on every one of our devices that are part of our cluster, as well as all of the core foundational resources and services like Kubernetes and Docker, Cassandra, as well as RabbitMQ. Now, the moment that all of this new infrastructure is going to be implemented, what we're going to find is, is that our services will be redistributed across these three devices in order to be able to provide our highly available environment. That's going to be the transition of the catalog server, the maglev server, the workflow services, replication of workflow uh, uh, configuration, as well as the registry that's going to be supporting our Docker operations. Now, I'm just showing five little boxes here, but please understand when we get into the environment, you're going to see the 130 some devices. I think there's actually 138 individual instances of Docker contexts that will be distributed across these servers. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make certain we have a way of understanding how we can, one, visualize these resources and two, implement and manage these resources. But nothing can take place. Nothing's ever going to happen until such time that we build our cluster. And that's what we're going to be looking at in the following series of videos where we go through the practical of setting up our baseline DNA center environment.